Hello and welcome, I'm Alas Gerdyuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. In the last few years, Ukraine has taken significant steps towards the reforming of its penitentiary system. A well-functioning probation system is one of the prerequisites for Ukraine's accession to the European Union. Aside from the political demands, the establishment of a full-scale probation system will solve several pressing issues in Ukraine. To talk more about this, we welcome to the studio today Tanya Sanford Omar, Country Director for Ukraine, Agri-Team Canada consulting. Hello and thank you for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So what are these several pressing issues that should uh, to be solved by this uh, probation in Ukraine? Well, we started here almost 10 years ago, actually, and the pressing issue that we faced at that time was a huge number of young people that were incarcerated in prisons. Mm -hmm. So in the early 2000s, Ukraine was looking at about 22,000 kids that were, had come into conflict with the law every single year. And we had over 2,000 kids that were incarcerated in prisons. And they were really huge numbers. Uh, the other... The, These this numbers are huge for the Ukrainian territory, you mean? When you look at population rates, yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite it's quite a huge number, and it's really disturbing because a lot of these kids were put into prison for reasons that might not even make it to a court system in, in other countries. So it's things like stealing a mobile phone. That, in fact, was the most common crime. It might change, uh, wow. but uh, depending on, you know, how popular mobile phones are, but uh, that was a peak around the mid-2000s. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, the law on probation was passed in 2015, but it just went into effect, uh, into force very late, right? Well, it went into force in 2017 because there were a couple of things that needed to be done. First, there needed the rest of the legal system needed to catch up with the pro okay. probation law. So there were some amendments in the criminal code that needed to make sure that the, the probation law would actually be functional, and then they needed to recruit entirely new probation staff. Mm -hmm. So basically, since 2017, when this law went into force, what changes do we have now? And what maybe, I don't know, new facilities or no incarceration? So we've seen a massive decline in terms of youth probation, and that was the area that we worked on for about seven years here uh, through work that was funded by the Government of Canada. So our focus initially was working with kids, and we saw massive decreases in the number of kids that were in prison. So when we started, as I said, it was around 2,000 kids in prison, and now we have less than 100 which is just amazing, right, by, by, by uh, any scale. Um, and we also have seen the number of kids, even on probation, decline. So when we started, there was an old system called criminal executive inspection that was a kind of Soviet version of supervision of a court sentence. And at that time, we had, I think, about 5,000 kids that were on registration, and now we have a far fewer. We have about 500, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's greatly reduced. Yeah, that's true. But uh, could you explain us, how does this probation work? What is the penalty, basically, mm -hmm. for committing a crime? So in Canada and in a lot of other countries, we call it a community sentence and there's other community sentences like uh, work that you might undertake and you might you might see that in places where you would see people that uh, are incarcerated, they're out on the streets, cleaning the streets, that kind of thing. Um, with young people especially, we like to use probation as one of the first uh, sanctions that we would mm -hmm. impose after a court uh, sentence. And that's because probation supervises the sentence from the court, but it also works on rehabilitating a young person or an adult. In, in this case, we have both in Ukraine now. So it's really trying to figure out what's going on in that person's life and trying to find ways to address those issues and make sure that they don't reoffend, mm -hmm. which is really, it's good for that person. But it's also good for uh, society at large because as a criminal justice system, really the point behind it is we want to make sure that we're keeping the community safe, keeping the country safe from criminality. Mm -hmm. But why do um, prisons and uh, uh, incarceration as a method are not effective anymore? Well, a lot of statistics uh, will back up what I'm about to say, but uh, to, to explain it, uh, not necessarily with the use of numbers, uh, prison is something that uh, takes a person out of the community that they're already in. Yes. And, you know, that's problematic to start with because most people who have committed a crime have committed a crime for a specific set of reasons. Uh, there's research done on this. We call them criminogenic factors. But one of the primary pieces of it is that they're not connected 
to the community that they're in already. So they might be unemployed or if they're working, it's not really where they want to be. If a kid is in school, he or she is maybe not con connected to the school community. So it's really, um, they don't have good connections with their families. Uh, they might be using substance abuse, etc. So then we take this person who's maybe not well socialized to start with, having a lot of issues, and then we put them in an institution. Yeah, separate from this unsocial life. Separate from even. community, exactly. And then you introduce a whole host of other issues uh, that we call institutionalization, and then somehow we're supposed to bring them back into the community and make everything all right. Probation really skips that, that step of institutionalization and just looks at focusing on the issues that that brought the person into conflict with the law in the first place. Mm -hmm. But who does supervise this uh, offenders? So those would be the probation officers. Um, and I, there's over 500 uh, probation offices across Ukraine right now. 500? 500. 500. But is um, it enough to cover all the country or not? It's, it's enough. Or um, the number is still growing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and we are seeing a lot of success, especially uh, with youth. This is the area that I, I do know best. Uh, okay. But we are seeing the numbers generally decline of kids who come into conflict with mm -hmm. the law, uh, the ways that the court system is dealing with them, and um, the number of kids that we're seeing on probation. And so so th this case, they're not taken out from the from the society that that they're in. So, do you know any feedback about their life? How did it? Well, how did they go on after after the penalty? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, we do. So, on probation, typically people get a probation sentence of anywhere from one to three years. That means that they go to the probation office. They they do an assessment. They figure out what's going on. What do they need to have? Is you know is it anger that's driving them? Do they have substance abuse issues? Uh, do they need to work on school or employment? Whatever. So they look at the whole life of the person who's offended. They do this assessment. Uh, and then they start to work on it. They develop a case plan, the probation officer with the probation mm -hmm. uh, client. So what we see is uh, we have several checkpoints where we can see how somebody is doing on their case management plan. And what we've noticed is that the, when we look at the statistics, we see the number of reoffenses being very, very low. To, a point where you don't see this in other countries. So we have a recidivism rate now, rate in Ukraine of 2%, less than 2%, depending on the region in Ukraine and whether you're talking about adults or young people. But that's just one part of the story. So they're not committing offenses, and, and that's spectacular. So in the case of young people, for example, before we started, there was a recidivism rate of around 63%. So oh, wow. 63% to about 2% uh, on average. This is an excellent result. Yeah. So that's, we're really proud of, of that result and think that's made an amazing change for a lot of people. But yes. when, you, when you dig down into what people are doing with the probation uh, program, you know, kids are finishing high school or they're finishing classes that they're supposed to. So they they're, don't ruin their lives. They're basically. not ruining their lives and they're doing things that are like proactive. Mm -hmm. They're moving on with their lives rather than engaging in criminal activities. Just to clarif clarify, what are the crimes that uh, a person can be sentenced to probation for? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because, again, we want to protect society. So this is not about taking somebody who's committed murder or rape, a, yeah. a, a violent crime. We're talking about light person. crimes. We're talking about light crimes, sometimes uh, medium crimes, property crimes uh, generally. So anything that's involving uh, violence is something that, that we're not talking about. So for the protection of society, like you want to make sure the society is protected from those people while they're getting help. But we're talking about people that have stolen something. Um, you know, one story sticks in my mind because it's just so ridiculous. It's about a young boy who was 14 who stole a sheep, a rope, and a wheelbarrow. And I, to this day, he, he sticks in my mind because I don't know what he was doing with those things, but it seems like, <laughs> it seems like a sense. prank, right? That somehow he's tied the sheep in the wheelbarrow. But this kid got four years in For prison. That. For that. So the reason that he got four years, it was one of these uh, aggravating circumstances where he did it with friends, and so it was considered a gang crime. So he, he just got released from prison this year at the age of 18. So wow. for this kind of strange situation, he lost his entire you know teenage life. Yes, basically. So then he probably would continue doing crimes because he would feel like offended by the state for punishing him so hard for, for, for this minor thing. 
Well, I, I mean, this could be a reason, the fact that he's away from family, he's yes. not gone to school, he graduates with a diploma that's you know, coded mm -hmm. in a way uh, that it's not necessarily a prison diploma from, from school, uh, but he's, you know, he's been excluded from his community for yes. his formative years, right? So who knows what happens uh, in somebody's head after four years of incarceration for something that seems pretty minor. But this probation system, as you said, applies not only to kids and uh, youngsters, but also to adult people, yes, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so what is the, what is, the, what is, well, how many cases can, can go on probation uh, if we talk about uh, this adult people committing crimes? Do, we have, do, do you have a lot of cases? We do have a lot of cases, but the system is not at capacity. And in fact, it makes a lot more sense for a country like Ukraine. It makes, it makes sense for the reasons I've said. It's effective, but it also makes sense to use probation rather than incarceration for a lot of these crimes. It's actually 10 times cheaper to use probation Cheaper than, it than is to use to... this yeah, penitentiary facilities, exactly. especially in Ukrainian reality when they work so horribly and it's expensive even to have these facilities and repair them. Exactly. Because they are in horrible condition as far as I know, right? Exactly. They're, they're not in the greatest conditions and you have a lot of issues with diseases like HIV and tuberculosis. Yes. So again, rather than uh, trying to find additional resources to deal with those issues, crumbling infrastructure within the prisons, here we could be looking at a, a sentence that's actually more effective and 10 times cheaper. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a no-brainer. So what are the new challenges that you face right now in Ukraine to, to, to improve this system functioning here? Well, we're very lucky. I mean, we've been working on it for seven years and met a lot of challenges along the way, but we have a probation law, we have a system in effect, we have people working on probation. I think now we really want to make sure that Ukrainian citizens understand what probation is all about. And that's what we're doing now. One of the reasons we're having an exhibition uh, starting here in Kiev at the end of this week and continuing on and through December, which is to explain to people why we're having probation and that it's not a risk to them that there are people out in the community that have committed crimes that we're actively working on uh, trying to rehabilitate them and, and have them lead productive lives. Well, thank you so much for your interesting comments and thank you for this contribution into the safety and security aspect of uh, Ukrainians and Ukrainian teenagers, especially our kids. Thank you so much for being a guest today in our studio. Thank you for having me. That was Tanya Sanford Amar, Country Director for Ukraine at Equity Team Canada Consulting. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Alice Gerduk. Goodbye.